What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and learn about British words for vegetables. <laughs> you know, a lot of Americans like myself, we feel like we sort of have a grasp and understanding of some of the, the British English words and phrases and even some of the slang. I know some stuff, you know, trousers, quid, uh, brekkie, that's a good one. I'm hip, I'm hip, I know some of these words. <laughs> but, but then lo and behold, I discover that apparently there are British words for vegetables. Vegetables is nothing sacred. Is there nothing that the United States and Britain can agree upon in regards to calling stuff? But uh, seriously, I didn't think, <laughs> I actually did not know that we, there were gonna be differences between British English and American English in regards to vegetables. So I'm very, very curious to uh, to learn about what these differences are. Maybe I can become, I don't know, the, the American vegetable ambassador. I will be able to understand and translate what we're all talking about, Americans and Brits, in regards to vegetables. So that's kind of cool. So, and so with that being said, I'm very interested in uh, what these vegetables are and what they're called in Britain. It sounds <laughs> very entertaining, so let's take a look. Looking to get your five a day when traveling to the UK? Then you'll want to know your spring onion from your Swede. Oh. Swede? Spring onion? Oh man. Am I just bad at vegetables in general? I'm not even sure I know what a spring onion is. I'm pretty sure that's the American word for it too. Oh no. We say tomato, you say tomato. Yes. We say potato, you say potato. You say cilantro. We say coriander. Yep, there's often more than a difference in pronunciation when it comes to what we call our veggies here in the- Yeah, it's not even just a difference in pronunciation. Man, I, I she just reminded me of the classic tomato-tomato thing. I haven't thought about that in a while. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> but yeah, it, it is surprising to me because, you know, like this is a group, a group of items, vegetables, food, that, you know, the fact that we don't call it the same thing is kind of strange in like a world where there's the internet, people are ordering things internationally. Probably not vegetables. I'm thinking like, oh, can I order vegetables on Amazon from Britain? Am I gonna know the correct thing to type in? They're probably gonna tell me to take a hike and that you don't <laughs> mail vegetables across the ocean, but that's beside the point. I think figuring out and learning what these different words are is gonna be helpful, important, educational, either way. In the UK. So here are the most common ones that are likely to have you Googling at the dinner table. Okay. Eggplant and aubergine. Eggplant. Eggplant. I don't even know if I've ever actually had an eggplant, but I would never, I, I understand the word eggplant, I would never have understood what on earth an ober, aubergine? Aubergine? She just said it and I already can't uh, pronounce it. The ones that are likely to have you Googling at the dinner table. Eggplant and aubergine. What okay. you call eggplant in America, we call aubergine here in the UK, okay. which we adopted from the French word aubergine. The U okay, you know, we're, we're, the first thing we're talking about is eggplants. This is not exactly critical to the survival and infrastructure of the American way, nor do I think the uh, British way. So maybe this is not like, maybe this isn't as big a deal as I thought if it's just vegetables, like no offense to eggplant or ober, aubergine, excuse me, aubergine lovers out there. But I, I'm curious if there's any really, really common vegetables that have different names between our two countries. US term eggplant is named after the white and yellow version of the vegetable, which kind of resembles a goose egg. Yeah with a little green hat. <laughs> it's actually really adorable. Okay. Eggplant or aubergine oh. emojis have recently hit the headlines. Yeah. And some people have been using them in a rather explicit manner on social media, yeah. leading to them being banned on Instagram. Hey, is that oh, an really? aubergine in your latest Instagram post or are you just happy to see me? Oh my gosh. The aubergine, the eggplant was actually banned on Instagram because of the connotations. <laughs> Zucchini and courgette. Oh, here we go. Okay, we're officially like in the territory of pretty common vegetables. Zucchini, plenty of people like zucchini. Courgette, sounds like a 
like a, a model of a car or something. Oh, just drove my Corjet in from the, <laughs> got it from the shop. It's going, <laughs> it's great, going fast. Zucchini, or courgette as we say here in the UK, is a squash that originally came from Central and South America, but eventually made its way to Europe by the end of the 15th century. Okay. Between 1880 and 1920, Italian immigrants settling in America brought the word zucchini with them, and it basically stuck. Okay, I was wondering, because I've never really contemplated the meaning or origin of the word zucchini. It's kind of a funny word, if we're being honest. It's a little unique. So it's, it's Italian in origin. That's interesting. Where does courgette come from? In immigrants settling in America brought the word zucchini with them, and it basically stuck. Yeah. Courgette is actually a far more recent word and only entered the Oxford English Dictionary in 1931. Oh. Again, it's taken from the French word courgette. So, yeah, this is the second vegetable item that is derived from French origins. That's interesting. I need to set a theme here. If you know the Katy Perry song California Girls, Snoop Dogg uses zucchinis to rhyme with bikinis, martinis, yes. and weenies. Yes. I wonder if courgette <laughs> would have worked as well. <laughs> courgette, an outfit in which you get wet. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. Arugula. Arugula and rocket. Rocket. There's a vegetable in Britain referred to as a rocket. But rocket is a thing. It's like a spaceship that goes into space. I assume that is the same in Britain as well. I really shouldn't assume anything at this point. Arugula, that's like a vegetable. Is that like a leafy vegetable, I think? <laughs> I'm revealing, you know, exactly how healthy my diet is today, huh? Arugula and rocket. Rocket sounds like it was given this awesome sounding name to encourage vegetable averse kids to eat their greens. Yeah. <gasps> We are ready to launch Green Rocket into space. Yeah. Target location, the black hole. Seriously. In three, two, one, blast off. <laughs> Sadly, this isn't how it got such a cool name. Long before the word... I know, for, uh, <laughs> for like the vegetable we're talking about, like the coolness of the name does not really correspond to the food item. Not to knock on the rocket arugula lovers out there once again. All you eggplant lovers and arugula lovers, I, don't, I just gotta say, for such cool names, I don't know if it matches the food. Rocket was even used for cone-shaped flying objects and fireworks. Us Brits simply borrowed the French word roquette and decided somewhere along the way that the QU in the middle was, well, a little too French and okay. made it less fancy by replacing it with CK instead. Okay. In America, Italian immigrants brought the term rugula with them, where it eventually evolved into arugula. But this is another vegetable in America that is derived from Italian origins. I'm learning about like the origins of American stuff today as well. Who knew? To us Brits, this kind of sounds like you've got something stuck in the back of your throat. Oh. <coughs> Arugula. <laughs> Arugula. Oh, yeah. Rutabaga sounds like such a fun... Rutabaga. Rutabaga. That is a really fun word. Uh... I actually am not, I'm, maybe if I see a picture of it, I'll know what a rutabaga is. That's just, <laughs> for the most part, the purpose of rutabagas in America is to be a funny word that no one really knows what it is. But apparently in Britain, it is called a, a Swede. Wait, a Swede? That's a thing. That's a person from Sweden, a Swede. <laughs> but it's also a vegetable. Rutabaga sounds like such a fun and quirky word to us Brits. A cross between a cabbage and a turnip, this type of squash was found to be growing wild in Sweden. We okay. originally called it Swedish turnip, but this has since been shortened to Swede here in the UK. Oh, it really is a Swede. So if you're talking about Swedes in Britain, you're either talking about a culture of people from Sweden or a turnip, a vegetable. Who knows? <laughs> But rutabaga also has Swedish roots, and it comes oh. from the Swedish term rutabaga, meaning root ram. Oh, okay. Scallion and spring onion. Here we go. Here's a common one. Yeah, there's a couple of vegetables on here that are actually, like, very, very common that Americans and Brits literally call completely different things. Which, I, again, I'm genuinely surprised about this. Like, the... <laughs> 
I, I'm so like, <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. It's like equivalent to when I learned about pants and trousers and shirts and jumpers and like all that stuff, like such common stuff, clothing items that Americans and British people call different stuff. Like I'm almost as shocked that there's so many food items we call different things. These might look the same on the face of it, but apparently there is actually a difference between scallions and spring onions. Oh. And it's all to do with the bulb. Scallions are straight and never grow a bulb at the end, whereas okay. spring onions do. Okay. In the UK, we generally use the term spring onions to include scallions and green onions. In Northern Ireland, however, they prefer the word scallion. And now that okay. I think about it, I like the word scallion too. Sort of sounds like something a pirate might say. <laughs> Avast ye scallion! <laughs> Wow. Cilantro and coriander. Coriander. I've heard this word before, but again, this is a lot of vegetables that I personally do not partake in, but I am very familiar with cilantro. That's pretty common in cooking. Uh, coriander, I've heard that word. I never knew it meant the same thing though. This is another example of the Brits being lazy and adopting a <laughs> French word, in this case, coriandre, as okay. their own. The Americans... Is a lot of, like, British terminology derived from French words? Because literally, at least half of the vegetables here, uh, with the British terms, have come from French words, which is very interesting. I didn't know anything about that kind of origin of the, the words and, or, or any of that being equally lazy, adopted the Spanish word cilantro. In the but at the same time, all the American stuff is derived from Italian words and Spanish words, so there you go. All of all our stuff is just from other stuff, who knew? In the UK, we use the word coriander when referring to the stalks, leaves, and seeds of the plant. But in America, cilantro is used just for the leafy part, okay. and coriander is used when referring to just the seeds, often ground into a powder and used as a spice. Huh. Whatever you want to call it, just don't put it on whatever I'm eating. As <laughs> Maybe that's why I've heard of coriander, because it is like an entirely different thing. It's like the ground it up into a spice or like a powder, whereas uh, cilantro is the leafy part. So it, they're kind of different, actually. So they kind of deserve to have two, two different names, honestly. I cannot stand that soapy tasting herb, or herb, as you oh. say across the pond. Oh, yes. It's horrible. Oh, yes. Or should I say horrible? <laughs> beets and beetroot. Oh, okay, beets. Very common word, beets. Beetroot. I mean, this is this is one of the this is one of the pairings I can most wrap my head around, I guess. Beetroot, it is it's like a root, right? And you even have beet in the name. I can live with this. I can live with this. Beetroot comes from the Latin name Beta vulgaris, but is known in the US simply as beets. Right. Because well, Americans are generally super busy, and that second syllable gobbles <laughs> up a lot of time. Okay. Which British fruit, veggie, or herb <laughs> names have baffled you in the past? Tell us in the comments or tweet us at Anglophenia. Just don't use the eggplant emoji, no matter oh. how excited you are. You eggplant emoji, or should I say Abergene? I still can't even pronounce that very well. <laughs> well, there you have it. Uh, British <laughs> words for vegetables. Never knew, never in all my days would I have thought that we call vegetables different stuff. Now, it's basically like my mind has been open to the possibilities. I, there's pretty much nothing off limits if we're calling vegetables different names and stuff, huh? Uh, this video was by Anglophenia. It was very, very good, very funny, and very informative, very educational. I might actually know what people are talking about now if I hear some of these words. Funny enough, I had heard some of these British terms before and had no idea what they meant. So that's kind of nice to have learned about this, educating myself a bit. But I'm also a bit uh, shocked that some of these vegetables are fairly common. Like, pr like pretty popular. It's... I thought it was just going to be obscure vegetables. Like, okay, vegetables no one cares about. Uh, we call them different names, whatever. It doesn't really affect anything. But these are, like, 
a bunch of these are like pretty popular common vegetables that we literally call different things, which uh, honestly kind of makes this world a little bit better, in my opinion. A little bit <laughs> tougher to communicate, maybe? But that's kind of the, the fun of life, the fun of our different cultures, that we do call things different stuff. We call things different stuff and different things, and that's kind of the beauty of it. So for that reason, I, I really enjoyed this. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to British culture, stuff about Britain in Britain that I have never learned before, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.